Let's give that hand to the Lord right now. I have not been disappointed. I came to feel the presence of the Lord. And I have felt and am feeling the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank God for His goodness. You can be seated for a moment. It's so good to be here. What an awesome service last Sunday morning. What an awesome service in the presence of the Lord. It's good to be here. It's been six years since we were here last, and some of you have never seen us before, but uh, my wife is, and Sister Hurst are sisters, okay? I don't say anything. I got the prettiest one, but they are sisters, and, and I am just so happy that she's with me. Amen. She's my sidekick. I get kicked in the side when I don't act right. It's just a joy to be here again. Um, if you were not at the banquet, I made mention of the fact that we've known the Hurst family for longer than brother and sister Hurst have been married. So I preached a revival in Elder Brother Hurst Church in Kennewick, Washington, when Pastor Hurst was 15 years old, and uh, I'd get him up early in the morning about 5 o'clock, and we'd go to the church and pray, and uh, he never balked on me. He never said, I can't get up. I'm too tired. He's always went with me, and uh, I've just watched him through the years, and then he, uh, he wanted to be close to me, so he married my sister-in-law. I'm just, I'm just having a little fun, just kidding, but uh, so, so we are, we are very much at, at home here, and I'm so excited about uh, Brother Matt and Sister Donnell, and you, you pardon me for calling them that. I, I, it's a matter of respect to to call someone by their last name, but uh, they're they're, uh, well, I've known. Danelle since before she was born and uh, and so you know it's just it's just wonderful wonderful family amen and it was so good to be here on Sunday I enjoyed everything about the service I enjoyed everything I enjoyed the music I enjoyed the worship I enjoyed the energy I enjoyed the synergy I enjoyed everything that happened. I even enjoyed the power going out. Now, as a pastor, which I've been for a couple of years or so, but as a pastor, I, I, you look at things like that incident happening, I, you, you look at it differently than if you're not a pastor, and I can't go into all of that. But I loved it because I got to see how you react when things don't go like they're supposed to go. Amen. That was thrilling to me to see people start pouring out into the aisles and worshiping God in spite of not having what we needed. Amen. So in the days to come, when things aren't going right, pastor has to say something that he doesn't want to say that the church is going to have to do or whatever takes place. Let me tell you, just keep responding that way. For the Lord God is with you and he will fight your battles. He's going to watch over you. My eldest son who sent in that video was right when he said, this will not hold the people that are going to come to 
the Pentecostal church, you're going to have to have a bigger place. So God is on the move. God is allowing things to happen. Amen. Acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways, and he shall direct your path. Everybody said, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand with me if you would. It is an honor to be asked to speak this morning. I pray that the Lord will the Lord will speak this morning. I want you to listen for his voice. I want you to hear the word of the Lord because the Lord laid this on my heart. It's very very important. It may not make you shout or dance this morning. But the point is that we need to go to heaven. Okay? It's not the shouting and the dancing that's going to get us to heaven. It's got to be something more than that, something deeper than that. No matter how many messages you hear across the pulpit, no matter how many Bible studies pastor is going to teach, it's got to be something more than just that. You're going to have to do something with it. He can't make it happen. I can't make it happen. No, God cannot even make it happen. God doesn't force anybody to do anything. No, he said, if any man come unto me, come to me. You can't get it just sitting there all of your life and waiting on God to get to you. It doesn't work that way. If any man thirsts, let him come. Are you catching the idea? Amen. Amen. From Psalms, the 51st chapter, I want to read a verse or two, and then I'll go to his son's book in Proverbs, the 23rd chapter. Beginning with verse 6 of Psalm 51, Behold, thou desirest truth. Everyone say truth. Truth. In the inward part. Everybody say the inward part. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins. In other words, forget forget all of my foolishness and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart. You ever prayed that verse? Oh, God, I prayed it I don't know how many times. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Amen. And then from his son's book, chapter 23, verse 23. By the way, if you don't know it, Solomon was the son of David. And so I'm reading from his book, 23 and 23. Why don't you read it with me right now? Let's read. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Buy the truth. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to buy the truth like never before. Yes. Amen. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor that's sitting there close to you, I like you whether you like it or not. I love saying that. <laughs> God bless you. Please be seated. I noticed Solomon's emphasis in this verse that we read last. Well, let me just read it quickly again. By the truth. That's the main statement of the verse. Okay? Little English lesson. That's the main thing. But he goes on to underscore it and bring in a few sub points when he said don't sell it and then when you buy the truth I want to tell you also to buy wisdom and instruction and understanding 
The main point was by the truth. Truth is greater than wisdom. Truth is greater than understanding. Truth is greater than instructions. Solomon's emphasis was to refuse to sell it. By the truth, and the second phrase is as important as the first phrase, maybe even more important, and that is, and sell it not. Once you get it, do not let it go. For anything, for anyone, for any incident, for any situation, regardless of where you find yourself, don't sell the truth. Amen, Brother Gary. I love seeing you, Brother Gary. You and your family, all of y'all, I love you. Praise God. So glad to see you. Always glad to see you. Amen. Amen. There's a reason why the Holy Ghost impressed the writer, Solomon, to use the verse, in this verse, the word by. Let me talk about that for just a moment. By the truth. I mean, God could have inspired him to not use the word by, but uh, get the truth, or have the truth, or possess the truth. Or take the truth. You could have said it in many different ways, but there was a reason why he said, buy the truth. That seems like, that seems like a, a wrong application for the word buy. How do you buy the truth? Costco doesn't sell jars of truth. You can't buy the truth. Or can you? He said, buy the truth. Is it purchasable? I, I thought all I had to do was just believe in it. And that's all that I would have to do to have the truth. So let me spend the rest of my time doing my best to tell you a little bit about buying the truth. I will begin by illustrating with my first car. 1955, Plymouth, and it was four doors, and it had a bad, the paint was very bad on it. The engine didn't do good because at about 45 or 50, a rod knocked. Sorry, kids, you have no idea what a rod is, but that's down deep in the engine. If the rod goes bad, you're walking you're not going to you're not going to drive home. My dad bought this car. I don't know what he paid. I hated it. It was a tank. It didn't look sharp. It wasn't fast. It was slow. I couldn't even drive it fast. My dad was really wise when he gave me that car. Because had I have had a hot rod, it would have had a hot rod before long. And I knew that if I didn't want to walk home, I was going to have to stay below 45. It had a pair of, it had an overdrive, and the, the handle had broke off, so he just put a pair of vice grips on there and tightened it down, and that was my handle for my overdrive. Seats were worn out and everything. It was just terrible. And uh, my dad bought the tires, and... I spun them off. I tried to get, all of my Mustangs had just come out. And I, I, I wanted something that would squeal the tires. I mean, I had, to, I had to get the attention of the girls too. And they loved nice cars. I had a friend that had a, 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 a hot rod. He had a Mustang. And all the girls wanted to ride with him. And when he got rid of the car, no girl wanted to ride with him anymore. <laughs> True love, isn't it? For, for the car, that is. And, and dad would buy those, car, those tires for me, and I would spin them off. If I could just find a puddle of water and I could slide around the corner, I would get the feeling of an Indy car. <laughs> and then my dad would replace tires. I'm not going to go into the kind of tires they were. Brand didn't matter. They were recaps anyway, about $2 a piece. 
okay? But that was back. That was a long time ago, you know? And uh, I loved I loved sliding the car until one day my dad said, you're buying the tires. And when I had to buy my own tires, that foolishness stopped immediately. And I had this revelation, this rubber revelation. And I got out of the car, and I, I had found a puddle of water and got the tire. It was a six-cylinder engine. I, it, it, it didn't have anything. It barely go. But I, I, I got them. I revved it up and popped the clutch in the water to get the wheel spinning. And I was able to hear a little, ah! Everybody had that, I, but, but I didn't have that. I, I wanted that, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't peel. The, uh, and I finally, I finally left a little rubber on the pavement only to look at it and say, that looks about like six months' worth of tire right there. <laughs> and I've left it there when I should have left it on the tire. I, I'm telling this for a reason. Stay with me. The thing about it is, is, when it became my responsibility and I had to buy the tires, the tires started meaning what they had never meant before. <laughs> you all sound like you know what I'm talking about. This can be applied to, to many, many different situations in life. But I think it best tells you what I'm trying to say. You know, things become more precious when you have to pay for it. Hence comes the statement that we hear, you need to buy into this. You need to buy into this. What does that mean? That means you need to give some blood, sweat, and tears to it. If it really means something to you, you need to give something back again. I used not to be this way, but I am now convicted if I don't walk by the offering plate and drop something into it. I'm not here because it's a freebie. I'm here because there's a blood price that has been, that has been paid so that I could come in this house, so that I could feel the presence of the Lord, so that I could understand what it all means. And the least I can do is buy into this thing. Amen. Amen. I want you to buy the truth. I don't know why the Lord laid this on my heart. Maybe some of you are, are, are hanging around the edges a little too much and you've not bought into this thing. I, I don't know. I, I'm just here. I didn't get to, to talk to Pastor before, he, before we came up here. He grabbed me and we walked up front. So he hasn't told me, well, so and so's going to be here. And they really are, they really are doing things wrong. They written, no, he hasn't said anything. If I say anything, don't look at him or go to him after church and grab me by the lapels and say, why did you tell him about that? <laughs> Believe me, I've had that happen before. But the Lord reaches out to us today. The Lord reaches out to us today. You need to buy the truth and not let it go for anything in the world. You need to buy the truth. You need to buy into this thing. Amen. It's, it's, it's more than the shout that you feel when you're in the house. Every time I come here, I want to get out. I want to jump with all of you. I want to run with you. I want to. I, I just feel it in my bones. I, I'm a music person, or a little bit of one, and I feel rhythm. I, I used to play the saxophone and the bass guitar and a little bit of the drums. I understand that. It gets me going. I feel it. But I, I'm not here just to juke and jive. It's beautiful in here. This music is addicting. It's beautiful. The choir did a wonderful job. Your singing is wonderful. And people that go to normal churches, they don't have what is here. But it's not just talent that is here. It's not just ability that is here. There is something deeper. There is something more powerful. 
Don't let this go right over your head. You've got to understand why this is happening because of what is happening. Hallelujah. 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 You can almost tell when you go to a restaurant whether the boss is there that day or not. Because if the boss and or owner is there, it's going to be top shelf. It's going to be as top shelf as it can be. If he's not there, let alone the sloppy side, not the right attitudes. Well, I, ma'am, I'd like some more tea. Well, get your own tea. Oh, no, the boss is there. You're not, you know why it's that way? It's not because he owns it. It's because he has bought into that business. He wants it to be the very best it can be. All of this that I see is addicting. To come in here, all of you are so friendly. All of you have always been that way. All these years that my wife and I have come, you have been so friendly and so kind, and the music is wonderful. Who wouldn't want to come to this place? But it's not about being addicted to what we do. There's something that's deeper in this that creates the atmosphere that you don't get anywhere else. You don't get it anywhere else. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus told of a parable, Matthew, the 13th chapter, about a man. In fact, he told two of them that were just alike, but he described them a little differently. The first one was the fact that a man found a treasure buried in a field. And he and I don't know why he found it. I don't know how he found it. He's digging around and he 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 hid it and he opened it looked, oh my. This is worth everything I've got put together and more. So he covered it back up, I believe. I don't know. We're not told, but let me imagine that he covered it back up and he ran into town or he walked. He's having to stop himself from running because he knew the owner and he went and sold everything he had and took that little bit of money and he was able to buy the field. And he was smiling all the way to the bank because he knew something was in that field that was more valuable than anything he had before he found that treasure. This place is a treasure in your spirit. This, tr- this place is a treasure in, a, in, in your spirit, in all of the world that's out there. There's nothing like finding the treasure and saying, Lord, I give all that up out there. I give the drugs away. I give the liquor away. I give all the habits away. I give all the evil away. I found something better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right after that, the very next verse, he goes into that second parable. He is trying to impress upon us readers. He's trying to impress upon us that this is something that is worth more than you'll ever find in the world, ever find. So he tells of a man, he tells in this parable of of a man who went shopping for pearls, and he found a pearl that evidently was more expensive, bigger, whatever, than any pearl he had seen. And he hatched up an idea. He went back, sold everything to buy that one pearl. What's the idea of getting rid of everything that you've got? That's what the rich young ruler could not do. The rich young ruler, he had everything. And the Lord said, go sell it. Follow me was the pearl. And you'll have more than you can imagine but he could not do it because he was addicted to what he thought he had. Oh, how different it would have been if he would have went home and sold it all and become a disciple. Hey, yes, oh, how different it was. This man sold everything and bought that pearl of great price because it was worth way more than anything else he would have than he had before. I mean, if you want to look at it this way, God bought into you and I. He didn't go to the cross after we got the Holy Ghost. No, it says that in that while we were yet sinners, when we didn't know God. Do you remember what it was like when you were lost? 
without God, without this peace and without this hope on the inside, that's enough to make you shout. That's enough to make you dance with joy because you found a treasure. You found something like never before. He said, buy the truth and sell it not. Oh, clap your hands to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He put his blood, sweat, and tears, literally, physically, into bringing us salvation. It's the greatest treasure you'll ever find in your life. People of this world like things that glitter and gleam and and shine, and they like everything that looks cool. Yes, you, you, you... You understand what I'm talking about. He bought into us. And now that I have found this, I'm richer than I have ever been. I bought a pair of tennis shoes the other day from, of all places, Walmart. Pastor Hurst might rebuke me for that. But they are comfortable. Okay? I don't have to have this world's goods. They're nice. If you can have them, it's good. Yes, it's good. It's okay. As long as that doesn't become the focus of your, uh, of your life. You got to keep everything on the altar, you know. Yes. The thing about it is, is that he's the greatest treasure that I have. One of these days, we're going to leave this old world. We're going, to get a, we're going to get a body without sickness, without sorrow, without tears, without all of that stuff. You're going to have eternal strength. You're not going to hurt anywhere. You're going to dance and shout and not get tired. You're not going to sweat. You're not going to pull weeds. Amen. None of that. None of that. Because God has given us a treasure. I feel like saying it, and that is that some, some of you here may be fooling around the church and not in, not in the church like you need to be. Yes, some come to church just never getting serious, never, never getting serious, fooling around there for the fun of it, and then they, get, they, they end up lost. They end up losing out with God. God has a unique way of testing every one of us. He proves us. He proves us. What does he do to us? He doesn't do anything. He just watches what you do. Don't tell me you love the Lord and then you don't want to come to church. I'm not pastor and I'm not trying to be a pastor. I'm just trying to help you get to heaven. I just want you to be saved. There's nothing like faithfulness to the house of God. There's nothing like faithfulness to give to God what he asks of us. And if you will, oh my, if you will. I've, uh, for all these years, I have looked at this, the story of the parable of the five, the ten virgins, and five were foolish and five were wise, the five that were Wise were wise because they made sure they were ready, okay? The five that were foolish didn't make it because they didn't make sure they were ready. And I've boiled that down until I've got down to the raw product of it all, and and I've come to find out that the reason the five foolish virgins lost out is because they just didn't pay attention to the details. Yes just didn't pay attention to the details. Because we can get flighty and we can just get loose and we can quit praying, pray a little bit, uh, justify ourselves why we don't have time to take time to pray and we can get on this stuff. But something begins to happen. The, the fog starts rolling in and you, you quit seeing clearly what the Spirit is doing. And you know, the five foolish virgins just didn't stay focused. Yeah, they knew what to do to be saved. They were there expecting to be saved. 
But when they all fell asleep, nothing wrong with falling asleep, they all fell asleep. But when they woke up, when they got refocused, they were alerted to the bridegroom coming. Then all of a sudden they realized how important that little, little bitty detail was. They didn't have any oil with them. They begged their friends to give of their oil, but they said, we can't do that. You go by. You run down to 7-Eleven and get your own oil. Good idea. We better hurry. But the whole problem was is they forgot to bring it with them. They didn't pay attention to details. God loves you but he pays attention to details. Yes. I will tell you that there will be a lot of people that, that, that go to church, apostolic churches, that will not make it. They were there for other reasons. They, they just didn't stay focused. They didn't pay attention to things that mattered. They didn't pay attention to Wednesday night church. They didn't pay attention to, to the spirit. They paid attention to the flesh. And oh, how easy that is. I just don't feel like coming. Well, you don't feel like get, being lost either. You don't feel like going to hell either. Get your carcass up out of the chair and say, I'm going to the house of God. I have a chance that God will heal me or bless me or help me. But it doesn't matter how this old body feels. I'm going to come to the house of God. But you have to make up your mind to purpose to make him the center of your life. Don't, don't, don't tell me you love me and then never want to be with me. You know why? Actions speak. Louder than what? Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm going to tell you a little humorous story so to try to help you remember. He departed from his beautiful girlfriend and said, I've got to go away for one year. I will be back, but don't worry. I love you, and I will write to you every day. And so he did that. He wrote to her every day. Sharpen your mind, because after one year, she got married to the postman. You remember that little story. The Lord's coming, and I've got to be with him. I should not say I love you and then won't come to church. I should not say, I love you, but I won't pay my tithes. That's none of your business, preacher. I got, you, you, have, you have to buy into this thing with everything. And when you do, God's going to give you strength and power. He's going to keep his hand on you. He's going to provide when you don't have any provision. He's going to heal when you cannot afford the doctor. He has a will and a plan for our lives, and he will if we will purpose in our heart to make him the center of our lives. Some hang around to get a wife or a husband. Some hang around because they like it. Some hang around because the colors are good. Some hang around because it's air conditioned. Some hang around because of music. You can't get addicted to those things. You've got to buy the truth first of all. You've got to say, I'm going to be here regardless of what happens. I'm not going anywhere. I've got to build the loyalty in my life to walk with God. Hallelujah. When you do that, and he said, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, as he did to the virgins, then you will be ready. You will be ready. you got to learn how to live by his word. you got to learn how to walk in his spirit. Stop playing around with God and get serious before you lose your soul. It's not about all of these peripheral things that are out here. It's beautiful. It's lovely. You're not going to find any better. But you've got to make up in your mind that I'm going to stay faithful to God. I'm not going to entertain anything else. I'm going to love the truth. I'm going to buy the truth. I will not let it go.
I went to church before I was born. My mama had me with her in a nice warm place when she shouted, I shouted. I've been in this all of my life. I've been in this all of my prenatal life, although I don't remember anything. I have come to that place where I have made up my mind that the Word of God is right. Everything, do you believe that today? The Word of God is from the breath of God. Okay, you can't say a word without breathing. You, when you talk, you're breathing out. And the Lord spoke this world into existence by the power of his mouth. And it became life and it became real. And so it is that I believe the word of God is right and everything in it is right. And I do not have the right to treat it like it's a smorgasbord. Uh, do you know what a smorgasbord is? Some of you kids may not know. Well, a cafeteria is where you go in and they serve you. And their favorite saying is, may I serve you? May I serve you? May I serve you? And you tell them, I want this and I want that. A smorgasbord, there's nobody back there. Honey, grab the spoon and dish it out to yourself. Okay? Some people treat God that way. Well, I love God when I'm feeling good. I love God. I, lo- I love this about that. I'm not sure I believe in this. Or I read something the other day, and I don't know about that. You can't pick and choose from the Word of God. It is forever settled. You've got to love the Word of God. And in the Word of God is the truth. Am I telling you right, church? That's why the Bible said, buy the truth. Buy the truth. It's going to make a difference in the days to come. It's going to make a difference in your family and in your life because you've settled the issue. I'm not going to entertain anything else. I don't care what anybody else believes. They can believe what they want to believe. But the Word of God is right. It's forever right. It's always been right. It's rock solid and it does not change. Thank God. Thank God. You've got to live your life around the truth of God's Word and not around the world. Okay, I, I like to fish. I like to hunt. I, but that's not the center of my life. It's out there. If I get a chance to go, I'll go. But if not, it's no biggie. Some people do the same thing with church. Let me take my temperature. (laughs) I've had them call and say, Brother Elms, I don't think I can make it to church. I think I'm going to get a headache. I said, let's pray. Lord, help them to get a headache. They're hoping for one. Let's pray that they get one. But I refuse to entertain any other thoughts or ideas. I do not think about anything other than, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. One Lord. One Lord. Say it with me. One Lord. Amen. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As far as I'm going, but there's a mile of stuff that direction. I want to tell you. I refuse to entertain any thoughts that would carry me away from truth. Truth. You've got to live your life around the truth. That needs to be the center stake of your life. Remember tetherball? They still have tetherball? Okay. It's a ball that's tethered to a pole. It can only go so far. You need to learn to live that way. And say, I'll go out this far, but no further. And then my orbit ends there. It doesn't matter what the world believes. This is what I believe, and I'm sticking with it. 
I'm going to buy into this thing with all of my heart. I'm going to raise my children. I'm going to see my grandchildren. I'm going to see my family. We're going to go to heaven together because we're going to buy into the truth. We're not just going to get it or steal it or acquire it or order it from Amazon. We're going to buy into it with our own money, with our own spirit, with everything that's within us. When he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with... Yes, that means buy into it. That means not just a little bit or here, a little there, a little. Or I'll just, I love God on Sunday mornings and I love God on Wednesday nights. I love God just here and there a little bit. No, no, you love him all the time. You love him all the time. You can't pray too much. You can't love God too much. You can't be too faithful. It's impossible for God has bought you into him. He has paid the price and we're going to love him. We're going to go to heaven because we bought into the truth and I'm not going to let it go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't offer me a million dollars because I'll say keep it, choke on it. I want to stay with the truth. I'm not selling out for anything. I have bought into the truth. That's why he said buy into the truth. I'm not far from closing. Let me remind you about the lions of Savo. I, I, I read a book about this remarkable situation. John Henry Patterson was in charge of this project. They were having to build a bridge from Kenya to Uganda in Africa. And it was a very terrible place because in, in building this railroad track, they had to cross the Savo River. It wasn't very, very wide. It wasn't any wider than the back wall. Uh, to the front wall, just but they had to build it. The problem wasn't the workers. The problem wasn't the, the materials. The problem wasn't the sun or the weather. The problem was two maneless lions. They were males. They were males, of course. They have the manes. These two didn't have a mane. But progress halted because the male lions were attacking and killing and dragging off workers. When they found their lair miles away, they said they collected parts or all skeletons put together of about 120 people. And they had never known a lion to kill except when it was hungry, but these were killing just to kill. They didn't eat them. They would just kill them and drag them away. And it was happening right in the camp, and they noticed something. They noticed that whenever the workers would come in from the night's work or the day's work and go to sleep, they noticed that the lion would stealthily come and nose under the edge of the tent and grab the closest one. Now, I don't know if you really know how big a lion's head is, but I'm not kidding when I tell you a lion that big around, teeth are that long, and he can put your entire skull in his mouth and close his mouth. It's big. It's big. So what he would do, what they would do, is they would grab the person closest to the edge of the tent. Never went in the middle of the tent. They just took the very first one closest to the edge of the tent. What I'm telling you that for is this. You need to get in the middle of this thing. You reading what I'm saying? You catching a drift? You don't need to hang around the edges. That's where the devil comes. That's where the devil tries to compromise you, tries to get you lazy about serving God, tries to get you lazy. You may have a call on your your heart. You may be a Bible study teacher, a Sunday school teacher, but you're saying, no, I don't want to do it. You better give in. You better let God have his way because there's a roaring lion out there walking about seeking whom he may devour. He's after you. He is after you. I'm telling you to get in the middle. 
Don't hang around with, with outer people. Don't hang around the circumference. Buy the truth. Get in the middle of it. God will bless you because Jesus said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. And that's the most important thing. Buy into the kingdom with all of your heart. Buy into the kingdom with all of your heart. Quit fooling around and make up your mind. You know you love what's here. You know you love what you feel here. You know there's nothing like this out there. It's not in your world. But when you come in here, there's a peace that passeth all understanding. There's something in here that gets a hold of you, and you love it, and you keep coming back. I'm just trying to tell somebody, you need to stop and buy into the truth. This is what you need. This is what you're looking for. This is what... You are needing from God. God is going to do great things in your heart and life. Amen. Singers, get up here. I don't need to go any further. I want to tell you that truly this, listen to me now. I know they're walking, but listen to what I'm fixing to say. This is a heaven or hell issue. There's a lot of things that aren't, but this is a heaven or hell issue. You can't be saved if you don't love the truth. You cannot make it if you don't love the truth. He's not going to qualify you just because you obeyed Acts 2.38. There have been a lot of people who obey Acts 2.38 but never fell in love with the truth. Satan comes and washes them out, washes them away. But the truth will put an anchor in your life that will help you walk with him and overcome temptation. You see, how, how, do, you, how do I know God's going to save me if I stay in the truth? Because he will have tested you over and over. You know, you don't know if you love the truth unless you're given a chance to walk away from the truth. And that's why God said about Abraham sacrificing Isaac. He said, now I know. Now I know that you love me because you're ready to sacrifice your, own, your only son, the promise. You get the same way. God's going to do something deep in you. I feel something deep trying to happen. I feel something deep trying to take place in somebody's life today. Make up your mind. Settle the issue. It, 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 this is for the long haul. This is not just for today or just this week. It's for the rest of my life. I want to go to heaven. It doesn't matter what happens in life. I want to be saved more than anything else. Buy into the truth and you will be saved. Stand with me right now. If you don't know the truth, if you've never been filled with the Holy Ghost, God can do great things. God can touch you. He can bless you in a way you'll never feel and experience out there. And God knows we're living in a time right now where something good needs to happen. Yes, something good needs to happen. I'm not being political. I'm just talking about the hatred, the murdering, all the wickedness that's out there has jumped and escalated in the last few years to the point our jaws drop open and we said, never seen anything like this before. It's a sign that he's fixing to come. It's a sign that we're living in the last days. Oh, Jesus, reach out and touch somebody right now. Put your hand on their shoulder and ask God to touch them. We need the touch of the Spirit. The front of the church is open if you want to come and pray. They're going to start singing. God's power is in this house. God's presence is here to do something for you. It's not just a feeling. It's a decision. You're going to make it. I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to live for God with everything that's within me. He promises to see you through. Oh, feel free to come up to the front. Be in the presence of the Lord God. Every one of you, feel free to come up and talk to God right now. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Buy the truth and sell it not. Jesus' name. Not just today. 
but every day from here so on out. Promise, Lord, Jesus Make us 